Acting is a profession that requires a lot of versatility and a willingness to test boundaries. Often, this bravery pays off with a critically acclaimed performance that's lauded for years or even becomes cinematic history. Sometimes, however, it results in a complete nightmare for everyone involved. Ellen Page's Bad Joke Are you honestly and truly going to prom with Katrina DeVore? Uh, hi. Leah just, just said that you were going to go with her. Juno was a critical darling upon its release in 2007, but actress Ellen Page thinks the indie comedy has one really big flaw. And we're not talking about that hamburger phone or the overly stylized dialogue. Silencio, old man. Look, I just drank my weight in Sunny D and I gotta go pronto. The actress regrets Juno's joke about potentially naming her baby Madison. Isn't that like a little gay? Paige told Bustle that the joke didn't register with her at the time, but now that she's older, she really wishes it hadn't happened. It's worth noting that Paige came out as gay in 2014, and she's become a vocal advocate for LGBTQ rights. In fact, when Paige performed a stage reading of Juno for Planned Parenthood in 2017, she skipped that line entirely. Denzel Washington is all wet. Based on the 1980s TV show of the same name, The Equalizer stars Denzel Washington as Robert McCall, a widower who works at a hardware store when he's not busy killing bad guys. In the film's climax, McCall lures some murderous Russian gangsters to his place of employment, where an explosion sets off the store sprinkler system. Looks boss, right? Well, Washington told Cinema Blend he quickly got real tired of being so damn wet. But by that third day, right there, right. at about 11 at night, after a 13 hour day, yeah. I, I disagreed. <laughs> it still looks pretty boss though. Margot Robbie gets messy. Actress Margot Robbie had a pretty bad time making Suicide Squad. First of all, her character Harley Quinn wore skimpy outfits that made her feel self-conscious. You're welcome. And she kept accidentally poking herself with her spiky gold bangles. Harley Quinn, nice to meet ya. But when the Washington Post asked Robbie what scene was her least favorite, she had an answer at the ready. She absolutely hated filming that scene where Quinn throws herself into a vat of white ooze. Robbie says she was utterly repulsed because the nasty stuff kept getting into her ears and nose. I couldn't breathe and I tried to open my eyes and it would glaze over my eyeballs and I could only see white. It was horrible. Chris Hemsworth, Shirts and Skins. Actor Chris Hemsworth isn't too thrilled about undressing on screen these days. Hey, sorry I tased you. He was perfectly fine being shirtless in the first Thor film, but increasingly got annoyed at those gratuitous scenes starring his abs. When Thor, the Dark World, rolled around, director Joss Whedon insisted he stripped down after a big battle sequence. Speaking with MTV News, Hemsworth admitted he was hesitant. So, and he said, Chris, get your shirt off. And I said, well, I don't know, you know, what's the why, what are we doing? And the issue came up again during Thor Ragnarok, and the shirt came off again. Hemsworth told Access Hollywood he was relieved he could keep his shirt on during the fifth Thor film. But director Taika Waititi felt the film needed some eye candy. And then Taika, midway through shooting, came up and said, oh, I think we need to put some bums on seats. I think we need to get the shirt off. And I was like, nah, they don't want to see that. They did, though. <laughs> Josh Brolin, God Killer. <laughs> It's fun playing the biggest bad guy in the universe. Just ask Josh Brolin. He crushed it as Thanos in Avengers Infinity War, and he reportedly really enjoyed tearing the Hulk a new one. But Brolin says he wasn't altogether pleased about having to kill Loki.
According to Brolin, actor Tom Hiddleston was obsessed with getting Loki's last scene just right, so filming became quite the bittersweet bummer. Brolin told USA Today, Tom was so vulnerable at that moment, so choking him out wasn't the most fun thing I ever done. Is it possible Loki will somehow be resurrected, much like a certain Game of Thrones character before him? Kurt Russell's hateful fate. I don't feel so good. Directed by Quentin Tarantino, The Hateful Eight was a lighting rod for hot takes and angry opinions, but music lovers probably had the best reason to hate the film, especially since Kurt Russell destroyed a guitar that turned out to be a priceless antique. Music time's over! <laughs> Russell thought the guitar was a prop, but it was actually an instrument from the 1860s and worth over $40,000. The incident really shook up Lee as she'd fallen in love with the antique, and Russell was devastated by what he'd done. Well, I'm already regretting this. Speaking to Billboard, Lee explained that Russell felt terrible when he discovered his mistake. When he found out, his eyes literally welled up. It ended up being great for the scene, but very sad for the guitar, and for my guitar teacher, and for me. Zoe Deutsch's Pizza Problem it's rare that a romantic comedy comes along and breathes new life into the genre, but when Set It Up hit Netflix, critics were delighted by the tale of two employees trying to get their bosses to hook up. Starring Zoe Deutsch and Glenn Powell, the film takes a predictable turn when the two matchmakers fall in love themselves. In the film's most celebrated scene, the two co-workers share a late-night pizza which sparks their romance. Uh, this is the best meal I've ever had. Unfortunately for Deutsch, filming the scene wasn't exactly romantic. That's because she devoured four entire pies while shooting that scene and threw up halfway through the shoot. And then she had to get very close to Glenn Powell in order to finish the shoot. She told Hello Giggles, I think he looks at me in a very different light. Fifty Shades of Gross Critics weren't the only ones who found Fifty Shades of Grey alarmingly unsexy. Based on the runaway bestseller book of the same name, the 2015 film stars Jamie Dornan as the snooziest sadist ever and Dakota Johnson as his willing slave. I need you to show me what you want to do to me. Punish me. Show me how bad it can be. Unfortunately, filming all those bondage, domination, and torture scenes could be pretty bad. Johnson spent hours tied up, blindfolded, and pretending to be struck by a whip. She told Time Magazine, It's really hot. Not in a steamy sexual way, it's just sweaty and it's not very comfortable. She said the sex scenes were so taxing she started thinking, Okay, let's just get this over with. Coincidentally, that's exactly what we were thinking halfway through Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> 